In today's video, we will be going through the 2010's American vampire horror film, Stakeland. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment on what your favorite part was, and subscribe to our channel for more. The movie opens in a serene landscape with a car driving across the meadows, so we already know it's a vampire movie. The backseat agitates as if somebody is having intercourse in the boot space, but when Mr. fires two bullets at the seats, you know it's not what you're thinking. Mr., a vampire hunter, no idea if that's a legit job, is traveling with a teen, Martin, who starts giving the background of his character himself. Down his memory lane, it's a cliched rainy and stormy night when his dad is trying to fix his car and his mom is holding an infant. Perfect for a vampire attack, right? To make sure our protagonist doesn't die in the attack and stretch the movie for a further 84 minutes, Martin hides behind his dog Cooper outside the garage just in time. As expected, vampires attack the place and a scream is heard from the garage, so Martin rushes towards the room instead of running away. He meets Mr. for the first time, who hands him a gun. Both of them arrive inside at the harrowing scene of the murder. Mr. fights the vampires off as expected, but even the young and naive teen Martin shoots and hits them. Any normal kid would get too dizzy and agonized by the experience, but he seems to be an exception. Not a surprise, anyway. In the next scene, Martin is shown being trained by Mr. for vampire hunting, with a helmet and a spear, because that is what it takes. Both of them are, at present, traveling through a ruined land on their own, while the vampires seem to have coordinated with the producers of the film to be gentle with the protagonists. They reach a wrecked factory site and Mr. pulls a weird looking tooth out of a burnt vampire and pokes some holes into the body, casually trying to teach Martin about the vampire anatomy. The latter is more disgusted than intrigued with this newfound knowledge taught by his anatomy professor. They light a campfire because even during the apocalypse, a weekend is a weekend. They are heading north in the search of New Eden even though they are warned against going there. On their way, the two rescue an old woman from two young sexual assaulters. What happened to them, you may ask? Well, Mr. can turn into a human hunter from a vampire hunter whenever the need arises. Good riddance. They stay in a house at night, setting up traps for vampires. Mr., who is awake, hears a noise outside and wakes Martin up. Both of them see a vampire and quickly hit its weak spot, the heart, killing it instantly. The vampire turns out to be the sister of the lady they rescued. She buries her sister and showers it with flowers. I don't know her name, so I'll just refer to her as the sister. The three of them then continue traveling. They reach a seemingly abandoned house where people lie lifeless in chairs while a baby is crying. They try to rescue the baby, but the baby turns out to be a doll, and the crying noises were coming out of a recorder. The people faking their deaths stand up and take the three of them into custody. It proves yet again that humans are the most poisonous, even more than vampires. What vampires could never do, humans did. The people capturing our protagonists are from a clan named Brotherhood, yet there's no sign of Brotherhood in the behavior shown towards Mr. Mr. is tied up and the clan leader Jebediah rebukes him for killing his men. The two boys Mr. killed in the effort to rescue the old woman just happen to be the members of the Brotherhood, with one of them being his son. He tells them that vampires are sent to do the Lord's work and should be protected. It seems like vampires know well who to attack and whom not to. When they let Mr. speak, expecting an apology, he spits in the mouth of the leader and tells him that he hates them and their god. Infuriated, Jebediah shoves him into a jeep and go towards a dense part of the jungle. Mr. is left for a flock of vampires to feast upon because they are foolish antagonists. They might not know it, but Mr. is a vampire hunter plus the lead of our story. The next morning, Martin is ordered to collect water from a nearby stream. He is warned that the jungle is too dense for him to try and escape. However, he casually ignores the warning and runs away. The techniques taught by Mr. prove useful. Mr. single-handedly defeats the entire schooling system. At least what he teaches can be used in real life. Martin somehow reaches their car and hides from a vampire who is ready to satiate its hunger. When he is ready to defend himself from the vampire running towards him, someone pulls him inside the boot of the car. As expected, it is Mr. who has escaped from the vampires. Mr. is now driving the car while fighting with the vampire. They pull over and Mr. drinks a beer while the radio announces the news about both of them. The news is from the Brotherhood, who seeks help from the listeners that a man and boy are traveling armed, so they should be caught immediately. 
Later that day, they arrive in Lincoln, still 820 miles to New Eden, because the movie is far from being over. While people are seen trying to tame the vampires, Mr. and Martin enter a pub and trade some antibiotics, weed, and a vampire's tooth for some drinks. If only real life were this simple. Martin notices a young pregnant girl, Belle, singing beautifully. She is an orphan who wishes to give a good life to her baby at New Eden. They offer her a lift the next morning. A new member is added to the trip. All three of them enter a house in the middle of nowhere amidst the vampirism pandemic because why not? It seems to be a good idea. Holding a gun in their hands, they enter except for Belle who can't bear the foul smell of dead bodies in various rooms in the house. Mr. opens a fridge and gets a beer can because yeah, the party must go on. They throw out the dead bodies and start having dinner peacefully. The next scene shows Mr. holding a newspaper because one has to keep up with current affairs regardless of the apocalypse. The whole world is at stake, but the newspaper publication seems to be safe. Martin goes to the basement looking for something. Clearly, he isn't looking for some common sense. This is further proved when he comes across a sleeping vampire. He hesitatingly kills the vampire, thinking that if not for Mr., he would have ended up like her, and this movie would never have been made. The next day, they see the members of the Brotherhood taking some people into custody. At night, while attacking some vampires, they rescue Will, a former military worker hiding in a public restroom. He informs the group that American military forces were withdrawn from the Middle East to help contain the outbreak, and that there is no Middle East to fight over anymore, as it is completely overrun by vampires. The Brotherhood was partially responsible for the fall of America, alongside the writer of this movie, of course. They infest cities with vampires by capturing cars and planes and swapping humans with vampires. They pursue Jebediah the leader by posing as their team members, deceitfully stealing their outfits. When Mr. asks about the whereabouts of the sister, Jebediah tells him that she escaped. Mr. leaves Jebediah tied up for vampires to feast upon. The vampires won't understand that he was their savior as hunger fears no gallows. They finally reach a human settlement and start partying. Like who cares about vampires and the brotherhood? They also find the long lost sister in the celebration. Their happiness this is short-lived when the Brotherhood bombards them with a flock of vampires from a helicopter. They aren't willing to show any heroism this time, so they run towards safety. The next day, the situation is under control, but Mr. insists on heading towards the north. Hence, all five of them embark on the same boring old journey. The car's radiator dies in the middle of nowhere, so they are forced to stay in the forest. Martin seems to have moved on from his past and has started to consider this as his new family. They haven't encountered any vamps yet, but Belle is slowing them down, according to Mr. As if not for Belle, they would have reached the moon by now. They reach an auto junkyard where they set up some traps for the vampires and go to sleep, except for Mr., who is busy smoking his cigarette as usual. Who cares about lung cancer during a vampire attack, right? Everybody wakes up now, not to smoke a cigarette, but because they hear a noise. They find themselves surrounded by berserkers, the deadliest vampires yet. They run for their life while Belle struggles because of her pregnancy. When the sister is overrun by vampires, she shoots herself in the head. They continue their journey and find an abandoned bus turned camper. When they find no trace of anyone living or the dead, they decide to stay there. The next morning, Mr. wakes them up, informing them that Will is missing. They find him killed and hung up in a tree wrapped in his blanket. Mr. is surprised as he had never encountered a vampire who can get around his traps and cunningly kill people. It must be a thinking vampire as he calls it and warns the two to stay alert with weapons by their side. A vampire that can actually think. Funny how humans are frightened with the thought of someone having capacities equal to them. They light a fire and stay for a night. Maybe Mr. is missing something if only a beer can were available. They are distracted by a vampire and Belle is taken away. They find her tied to a wall covered in blood on the verge of dying. The thinking vampire reveals itself as the same Jebediah they had left for vampires. He gave his blood willingly to the vampire, so turned into a vampire. He impales both of Mr's hands, but Martin attacks him from behind. Right then, the former succeeds in killing him even with holes in his hands. He's the protagonist, remember. Martin kisses Belle goodbye and Mercy kills her, saving her from 
from becoming a vampire. Mr. and Martin find a pickup truck that was just waiting for them to arrive. They stop at a house where they see some dead vampires. The vampires are all killed by arrows. A random girl named Perry aims an arrow at them assuming they are vampires too. But after confirming they are of no threat, she takes them inside and shows great hospitality. This place was owned by her mom, who is no more. She has great skills in archery, of course, through a lot of practice. Martin finds a connection with Peggy. They have a good talk and Martin even kills a vampire which she was never able to. They sleep together while Mr. watches them with content or maybe even some jealousy. The next morning, Mr. is nowhere to be seen, signaling that the movie is about to end. Martin finds Mr.'s skull pendant hanging in the truck's side mirror. He and Peggy pack for their honeymoon and get inside the truck. Martin starts driving, even though he was never taught how, due to the power of his newfound love. Don't ask me if this power will remain even after their breakup, I'm not spoiling this. The pendant is hanging in the front mirror now, letting Mr. stare at the new couple like he always used to. They arrive at New Eden finally, which is nothing but another name for Canada. Then they live happily ever after, or do they? Thanks for watching. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel to see more of these movie summaries.